What up, though, G? What up, nigga? Yo, we, let me tell you how we was on here talking big shit. Like, oh, this, yeah. nigga probably, this nigga probably rolling up. Like, he probably... <laughs> nah, guess what, man? It's the time zone, bro. When they told me the, the whole layout, I'm like, shit, I'm there. But I guess the time just kind of, you know, you didn't put the East on there. You see? Yeah, that's my, I'll take that L. I'm going to take that L. I'm going to take that L. I was, I was on here for like an hour. We turning up to your shit and everything. Like, nah, you can just get real. lit to your shit and everything. That's that real talk, man. Outbreak, man. It's out yes. right now, man. For those that ain't got it, the link in the bio. and It's on all platforms and all that good stuff, you know? Man, they acting like, come on. Yo, they acting like, you ain't. Let me play some shit real quick. Just because this shit, this is my favorite song on here. This is what everybody need to do right here. This is what everybody need to do right here. We need to make this a hashtag, nigga. That's that work. Do you? Let me do me, nigga. I've been up and down and back and forth. I knew the beat. Don't be no doubt, rule the beat, homie. Yeah! I wish I had the speakers, the surround sound, the fuck it. It's a do. That's that work. It's a motherfucking movie. <laughs> we talking heat. What up, nigga? Yo. What is that work? That's that like, work right there. Hey, Look, I want to give you your flowers real quick. Give me a second, bro. We're gonna get into the interview, but nigga, you a motherfucking legend. Hold Man. up. Let me let me get let me give you your flowers. They acting like you ain't do this shit. They acting like you ain't do this shit. Ooh. In this game, no one niggas gonna hate me just for the simple fact they know that. No, they don't move. I got a hell of an aim. I keep on telling you, man. I, they they gonna find you. That's that work, man. They tell them up your city because I'm behind you. That's that classic shit. They acting like you ain't do this shit. That's that state DC shit right there, Jay. They acting like you ain't do this shit. Go fire, boy. Hate it because we made it. <laughs> they acting like you ain't do that. Hold up, man. They acting nah, like that's you that ain't... work. That's that they work. like you ain't do this, though. Man, listen, man. Man, listen, man. When they, you know, wanna, they acting like you ain't do this shit, Buck. What they talking about? Hey, Shorty, you wanna? You can get low. I'm up in the Chevy phone, don't blow, Joe. Hey, that's that work. Yeah. That's that Buck classic shit right there, man. They acting like you ain't do this, Buck. What we talking about? Don't that's be that Buck classic now. right there, man. Hey, in the Chevy phone, don't blow, Joe. Hey, 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 Buck, they acting like you ain't do this, though, Buck. They acting like, they acting like you ain't do this. Come on. Come on. They acting like you ain't do this, though, Buck. What we don't do the about, people Buck? like, don't what do the people about? like that, man. Come on. Stop. That's that classic shit, bro. From who the boss? I'm gonna break the ball. Oh, uh, where you from? Who the? Let me break the ball. Hey, Buck, come on, bro. Why they playing? That's their bro? work. Why they That's playing like, like you ain't I... had one of some of the hardest verses. That... Come on, come on. <laughs> you don't have to hey, like me. Like that, man. What's the so bad right now? From back in the day. <laughs> Number on, oh, oh. I threw out my chain. I'm doing my chain. The water man throwing the it. In the, come on now, we all know gold is getting you old. Know, the ice so much. Look at this town show. Acting like y'all know. Look, I can get the water for the phone no more. That's that work, man. Come on. Hey, Buck, what up, nigga? I'm right here, man. man. Hey, I see, boy, you waking them up real quick, man. Motherfucking king, that's, bro. That's called, that's called a quick reminder, you know what I'm saying? Hey, Buck, you're a motherfucking king, bro. Hey, man, hey, I appreciate it, bro. I'm just trying to keep it going. I feel like I just ain't got my just do out here. So, you know, getting out of my situation, man, walking out of this cell, man, I said, when I touch the ground, I'm going to touch the ground running. You know, I, I laid down in that cell and, and just opened my brain up like, 
you know, let me figure out a way to do this situation because it seems like I done exhausted all angles as far as trying to get out that contract and dealing with dude. You know, it was a point in time I tried to pay him and all kind of things that I went through. So, you know, I realized that it's going to be just a back and forth type of situation, you know, and I figured, man, at this point it ain't nothing but, you know, it ain't got nothing to do with me financially or nothing. But I said, you know what, let me file bankruptcy. If if, if I owe you something, just show me and I'm going to pay you. And and homie ain't never show up or none of that. So it, it sent me on, on, on out of that situation. And now I'm able to just get the streets, this music, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, just kind of give give a person a dose of their own medicine. You know, I learned it from him. You did. Yo, but I ain't gonna lie, yo. As somebody, as somebody that looked up to you, and I'm I'm gonna just keep it a hundred, bro. Yeah. Um, you 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 can understand this because you even said before it was times where you were in the game or whatever, and it was t it was t it was niggas that he might not have fuck with that you fuck with. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So you couldn't break those relationships. So I'm just I just wanted to make that clear. I say that to say. Looking up to you and everybody in the group, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was one of the hardest groups ever, period. For sure. And, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just coming to you as a fan, and it's crazy, because, like, if y'all could still be together, I know y'all had y'all differences and shit like that. It just would be so much better than all this bullshit. Like, it just, uh, it just make a nigga mad. Like, nah, I get, I get where you come from, and you know... It, I don't know what to say, honestly, Thanks. when it comes to shit like that. It's just one of some situations where, you know, it's so much water under the bridge as far as in regards to where me and him stand that, you know, I ain't got no ill will, no bitter feelings, you know what I'm saying? I'm better at everything that I do, Every every everything that I done been through, I wouldn't change it, you know what I'm saying? Because, honestly, it made me who I am. And, uh, honestly, I don't think if I done went through some of this shit, the people wouldn't even be so in tune with me like they are now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, whatever the era was with G-Unit, it's a classic, it's a legendary era. I don't take nothing away from 50 for giving me that opportunity that I took advantage of. Uh, if it was anything that I would say that I could do over, that was, you know, put the same amount of energy that I put in for us, the opportunity, I would put that same amount into the business because in the end, you know, I kind of got the short end on the business. So, you know, it's all been a learning experience for me. What don't kill you make you stronger. And for Yo. me, and I've just been really focusing on life in itself. My children, you know, they done got the, the worst end of this. You know what I'm saying? In my world, when I go through things, they go through things, whether it's good or bad. So, a lot of this negative shit, you know what I'm saying? They have to experience. I ain't got no real small babies. You know, they still active. I got daughters just dancing and rapping and all of that. So they see the things and hear the things and all of that stuff. So a lot of those things had to had to do a lot of soul searching. You know, am I going to throw this away for this? That right. Time. So it's mm -hmm. one of the things where it's just like, you know, God put me in a place and say, you know what? I'm so talented with it. You know what I mean? I can I, I feel like at this point, man, my biggest payback is success, man. I honestly, bro, it ain't about me getting up here and talking about this person or using this platform to speak on this and speak on that. If I'm speaking on this it, facts, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people hate to deal with the reality of some of the energy that the facts bring. You get what I'm saying? So for me. I ain't never really had shit to hide, period. You feel me? I done went through my things out of this game. And like I tell you in the beginning of this conversation, I just feel like I ain't got my just due, homie. So I'm right. I'm really, really mashing through this. And I, I really ain't giving a fuck, honestly, about who say they there or who mashing with me. Because I, I, I'm honestly realizing, like, you know, after me going through so much and all these different things, and I dropped this project, and I, you know, I follow a lot of these dudes, have cool relationships with them, but I ain't never asked no celebrity nigga to post my shit or support me or none of that. And none of them ask me, but I, I do. You get what I'm saying? So, like I say, this whole thing I've been going through as far as career-wise and on my journey back to the top and shit, I just had a chance to be able to organize 
myself, I guess, you know what I'm saying, and set individuals in places where they belong. Like, you're not a friend. You're, you're a friend of me. Let me sit you over here, you understand, and get you away from me. You feel what I'm saying? Or you're not in my best interest. Let me set you over here. You get what I'm saying? You ain't want enough for yourself. You tripping, you feel me? You don't want to go get nothing, you feel me? So it's just a having so much on my plate and just having this time, this whole quarantine when I get out of jail, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> time laying back, so I'm feeling good, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. Hey, Buck, um, so, like, you know, we're in a different, like, age bracket or whatever, and I feel like we learn a lot from you, and I feel like we can learn a lot from each other. I feel like in this generation, like, your generation was, I ain't asking a nigga for shit. You know what I'm saying? And I only touched on this just because of what you said. You said you follow a lot of these dudes, and you don't ask them for shit. And I feel like we got that from y'all, but then we realized that ain't shit going to close mouths don't get fed. I feel like we, we found that out. And I feel like, bro, you're so respected that you it don't have to be a pride thing or a principal thing no more. Like that that Not was the sure. time. Yeah, you for can sure. ask niggas and niggas will fuck with you. You can like yo, can you can you support me? Can you can you post my shit? And I feel like niggas would do it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I done felt like that too, to be honest with you. And and, and sit my shit. And mm. and I've seen a few of them open that motherfucker where it say seen and that's it. You feel me? Or you know, I get the love, but I'm one of them individuals where you know, my talent speak for itself. You know, without a without the extra energy, you know, I get my love from what celebrities or whatever you consider us, you know, but uh, at the same time, you know, I can't complain. You know, I'm number five on, <laughs> in the country when I drop. You feel mm -hmm. when I'm talking about talk that shit? Six, seven days. So, you know, my thing totally independent, period. So for me, I realized that, uh, Nothing can stop God's plan, period. You know what I mean? And everything that I've ever done is, and do is genuine. So if a person ain't doing nothing genuine for me, I don't really want it anyway. Don't post me if it ain't genuine love. You just want to post me just because. Like, I'd rather for it to be genuine. Yeah, we can do business. But if it's an individual that I had any kind of friendship or any kind of understanding with, you know, it's supposed to be genuine. Anything yeah. outside of that is just, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, like I say, Outbreak, my tape is a seven-song EP. So first crazy. project that I've dropped since I've been able to release music, you know, uh, being that it was a lot of cease and desist in place, you know, that's that's what really the big holdup was. You know, a lot of people have purchased a lot of my catalog and and only for it to just be cease and desist and have no understanding on what's going on. But what what happened with that was just, you know, going through the whole G unit situation, you know, they were sending out cease and desist to like YouTube, Apple Music and iTunes, all of these different places just to stop my music from even being, you know, sold, heard, played or any kind of way. That was homie's whole tactic was, I guess, to silence me and kind of throw the smoke and mirrors up as if it was about a dollar, as if I owed somebody something. But nah, It's crazy, because I seen somebody put in a comment, like, ask him about why he take his music off, and I never knew that. But now mm -hmm. that you break it down, it gives us a clear understanding of, you ain't yeah. take the music off, nah. it was forcefully taken off. Yeah, nah, man, and shout out to uh, everybody who's purchased the music right now. I'm in the process of uh, kind of redoing a lot, you know, far as uh, deals and things like that. You know, for some reason, I just drop this tape and this shit, take it off like it that is. Shit was, it's, like, yeah. it's like, I don't owe you nothing, man. You finna give me the bag. You feel <laughs> like, like, it's you like, nigga, you yeah. should post my shit. Hey, I, honestly, all right, so um, I read his book or whatever, right? And I was wondering, the way he break it down, he ain't say your name, but the way he broke it down, he was saying that, like, you know, Sierra Marie had owed him some money, and he kind of took it out on everybody that owed him money. That's what he said in the book. Is that right? Yeah, that's what he, it's in the book. You can read it for yourself. Nah, it says, I, you know, I ain't read the book, but... Yeah, so he was saying... Go ahead, go ahead. He was saying that Sierra Marie had owed him some money or whatever, and, like, because she took him to court, and, like, he had to pay his lawyer fees, but the, the judge ruled in his favor saying, yeah, you got to pay him back this $30,000 for his lawyer fees. And in the book, he was saying... He didn't want to be sweet, for lack of better word, to everybody. So he took it out on everybody that owed him money. This is just what he said. So he was like, he just started sending it out to everybody. Even his friend, his homie, Ro Timmy, got 
got some shit behind it. And I, and I yes. say to say, do you think that y'all can have a conversation and it could be any type of agreement or any type of understanding? Not what happens? I, don't owe, I don't owe 50 a dime. Right. They owe me, if anything, I can show you. Right. Tell 50 to show me a receipt where I owe him and I'll pay him any dollar. Don't get it twisted. Even when it came for the 300000 that he was putting out there to say that I owe 300000 I knew I didn't know it. But for me, wanting to be getting to the music, I even offered to pay him. Yeah. You know, oh, it was lawyers and lawyers, all of the communication. You know, we want to know what he came back and told me. <laughs> Honestly, it's a joke for me, but I have, think I offered him 150 up front or something like that and give him the other half in 30 days or some type of deal. I was just like, okay, at this point, I know I don't owe you. If we got to go about this way, I'll deal with you the other way and come get mine and plus everything that I can show that I'm owed. You get what I'm saying? See, I'm. I, it's a different. It's a different level. You know, if he can look in the mirror, or look at any one of y'all and say, you know, he don't owe nobody, or somebody, or not me. Now somebody else might owe him. But any of those other people, I don't know their business, but me personally, man, I don't owe fifty a dollar, man. Tell him to show you a receipt where I owe him something, and I pay him. See, that's what this whole smoking mirror thing that he created, and it's just, I think. You know, karma don't have no picks and chooses, and she's sharpening her knife. I'm I'm dealing with the the fact of uh, public opinion, and that's okay. You know what I'm saying? The truth will override everything. But the real deal situation of me and 50 was not behind the allegations of the bullshit, gay shit. You understand? None of that shit. The fact of what me and 50 issues was about, he was alerted from somebody as small as sound exchange that going forward, I was going to be receiving my only th my own 33 and a third percent because it was three years of checks that they had been holding and wanted to know why I hadn't been cashing these checks. And I'm like, well, who are y'all talking about? Six figures. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, cashing checks? I ain't never cashed a check from y'all. So it started from something that small. And like I say, come to find out once everything get tracked down, like I say, just something that, uh, that's just one thing. <laughs> You know, since Sound has Changed even existed, my checks was going straight to G-Unit Incorporated. You know, they had been cashing my checks or whoever was. I'm not even going to say him or whatever. But my checks was going to G-Unit Incorporated since Sound has Changed existed in 2006 or 2007. You know, the checks were being cashed up until 2015. That's when I came back to G-Unit. I had checks sitting from 2015 to up until 19. And that's how they reached out to me, wondering why did I stop cashing the checks? I'm like, what are y'all talking about? All of these things were developed out of him encouraging me <laughs> and the others to go get our business together. Well, all right, probably here. I got my business together. You know, and then I guess at that point, once he was alerted from them, he felt some type of way because he immediately blocked me from social media, phoned him, and then he started his rent. The bullshit allegations gave 50 a platform to be able to stand on and say, oh, this is why I'll play with the fans' mind. Oh, man, maybe he threw it out the group because of this shit. Fuck no. When that bullshit jumped out there, he's the first nigga I called. It's supposed to be my brother, right? You know, I, I, I knew, I, I just knew that this shit is happening. You get what I'm saying? This shit wasn't nothing like it played out. And I'm not even going to get all off into that shit because it's like, fuck out of Understand. Honestly, but at the same time, I stressed out the homie when the shit happened and kind of gave him low down. Like, what this bullshit, bro? And he knew what it was. He's like, man, don't pay that shit no attention, blase, blase. But I was kind of focused on giving energy to certain individuals out of that because I felt like you know better. Don't play with me like that. But it kind of gave the situation legs. And at the end of the day, I deal with the repercussions. You know, I learned from them a lot, you know? I put myself in a fucked up position. Hell no, nothing happened the way that it was sold to these people. But at the same time, I put myself in that position. I deal with the repercussions. Ain't shit soft or sweet about me. Not to diss nobody or nothing. Because them people human beings. You know, I ain't got no problem with nobody. But what I'm saying is I just being up under the situation of having to deal with somebody who took, you know, a negative situation and kind of made it, with it. Yeah, made it a platform to kind of cover up what our issues was. And our issues were nothing but business. You know, it could have been handled from a simple conversation. 50 rich, 50 got 
all kind of money. Let me tell you something. Name one movie that you've seen me in. None. Name how many movies 50 produced. Yeah. All right? What I'm saying is this. Not only me, but even the others. We are only, you kind of only good as your boss. You still, it's almost a chain of command. That's kind of how we were, we dealt with, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I was the one that was used as the example for the others. 50 would, you know, true banks and yayo out at times. Y'all need to be doing what Buck doing. You see what he doing? He out here pushing for himself. You know, and shit like that. You know, Banks would be on his own time and Yayo would do what he do. But I was the example. But when shit hit the fan, he even used my own catalog, which I paid for. Every 10 mixtape that I dropped with the whole 10 of key mixtape series, all of those things funded. 50 ain't paid for none of this. When I say 50 bought a billy for me, shorty, but it's still, man, way back then, homie. I'm lying my ass off, but that's how I wanted the picture to be because you can do this. This is the way it's supposed to be. So being a good fucking team player and being loyal, you know, put me in fucked up position, got me put in fucked up positions. Now, I can sit here and give you a lot of negative, just like I ain't been perfect. The nigga probably could give you the same amount. But one thing I can say is that I'm man enough to stand in front of mine. I'm not going to make my negative positive. And can others say that? And no, facts. Kind of, you know? You know. No, I definitely believe you because, like, even what I was saying, in a book, he didn't really he didn't say nothing negative about you. He, he, he did mention how he was like, man, he felt disappointed because he wanted G-Unit to be the next – everybody in G-Unit to be the next 50. He was like how he, – he was saying how – uh, Lloyd Banks was lazy. How Yayo was the wild one in the group, but he never Man, mentioned you. Ain't, ain't shit, ain't shit lazy about Banks. You know, I ain't gonna let a motherfucker keep on putting that shit off on homie. Homie talk down so much on niggas. You know what I'm saying? You know, I used to sit back and look at times like, damn, nigga, you know, what are you getting from this shit? You get what I'm saying? Speaking down on the same individual. You didn't create G-Unit by yourself. You understand? G-Unit was a crew. And at the end of the day, you know, yeah, it was your brand. But we all collectively came together and pushed this one to make that brand become what it became. Sometimes take the lick or sometimes give the direction or even sometimes receive the direction or give the lick. You can't control everything. And that's the thing about the situation. It was more yes men or individuals that ain't no business. Nigga, you're the real life street nigga. You ain't got no business being no yes men. But the money made these niggas in, become yes men. These niggas are not yes men, but then they following individuals who in positions of power and feel like they have to agree with the person who's in position of power to stay in the position with that person. I don't rock like that, homie. You understand what I'm saying? I'm my own man. I rock the way I rock. And, you know, like I say, I wish nothing but the best for G-Unit, period. Because at this point, I'm going on, man. You feel what I'm saying? The people understand it. And, and I let the music speak for itself. That's one thing I got away from. I found myself doing a lot of this that ain't even in my character, man. You feel me? I look stupid. Yelling at a motherfucker or ranting on this shit or whatever. It's not who I am. I'm more of a, you know, type of individual where, you know, if it's dead, it's dead. You feel hey, Buck, respectfully, your... respectfully, yeah. let's get into you because this is about you right now. So, like, we don't even need to deal with the tabloids. We real niggas and we can talk to each other about what, what you got going on. You know what I'm For saying? Sure. I, and, I, and I say that out of respect because yeah. you don't want to waste too much time on. All that nah, 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 that's but, real respect. That's, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like and, I say, I'm not here for that, but... Nah, facts. Listen, and, and I could... And, and listen, and I can I can be one of the media niggas to get all of it and try to put it on YouTube and try to get out, you, you know what I'm saying? But that's not to, it. Man, you wouldn't have to try to get it. I'm going to give you what I choose anyway. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of them things, like, I respect you just going to get what you want. You feel me? Or looking for, but... You know, I, 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 I'm going to give you... The real period. You hey, feel but, me? You, um, 
You said that the last time, this last time you was locked up, you said it made you a better pops. Yeah, yeah. Why, why it, do you think? Well, honestly, man, I was locked up in this situation in regards to my son, you know what I'm saying? And I'll say that in regards to, regardless of the situation, I, like I say, I look at my situation when it comes to dealing with my children is like, you know, I haven't been the best father for numerous reasons. And it's nobody or nothing to blame but myself. You understand? I'm running around chasing this money, running around doing this and that. And at the same time, that time is so precious, bro. I done miss so much, you know, from just being really straight, really, you know, trying to find a way, going through so much, trying to keep this shit paid. Then my children, you know, missed a lot of their father in their life, you know. So laying down in my situation, yeah, I was bitter because it's like, damn, you going this route to, to, to just try to get a few dollars? damn, you got to make this up to do this, you know, but I start to realize the wrong in me. Yeah, two wrongs don't make no right. Yeah, Shardy might been doing whatever she done, but at the end of the day, I ain't been the best on my end. So, you know, before I blame somebody else, I start looking at myself and say, you know what, let me correct myself. So shout out to all my kids. They probably tuned in right now, checking it out right now. My little girl just sent me a a step challenge. I said, Daddy, why you take the step challenge <laughs> down? I said, I said, baby, we finna make it bigger. Shout out to Jazzy Faye, man. Jazzy Faye, uh, I hollered at Jazzy Faye the other day, man, about the step challenge, man. And we got something, uh, well, hopefully, it's something big that could happen with this record, you know? Hey, Buck, um, man, I am definitely want to soak in all the knowledge from you, man, because I feel like I, I can learn a lot from you and everybody else. And everybody that's on my platform, everybody that follow me, we all can just learn a lot from you. You know what I'm saying? And it takes a lot just to be accountable for yourself. I wanted to ask you, how can you be... Because every time we saw you, we related to you because Buck was a real nigga. Buck was always a real nigga, and we saw that from Buck. But honestly, right, looking back at it, how can you be a real nigga and successful at the same time? Well, honestly, you can't focus on being a real nigga. Mm -hmm. I don't know a real nigga that focus on being a real nigga. <laughs> Talk about that shit. I'm just being honest. Like I don't know. Honestly, you can't. Somebody else got to make you a real nigga. You did. Like everybody, every nigga considers himself real, but your actions and shit, and the things that you do, and you know the way you uh kind of maneuver in situations and life in itself determines that with people, you know what I'm saying? So me personally, you know, I've always just done me and everybody gonna put their brand on you is just the ones that you choose to let stick to you. You dig what I'm saying? Cause yeah, you can be a real nigga and, 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 and to a hundred niggas and to that one nigga, you might be a bitch. You feel mm. what I'm saying in his eyes? So like I say, it's a respect thing. Me personally, I feel like I just give so much respect, I can't go for none. No disrespect. I give so much respect, it's kind of, and I don't go through a lot of disrespect, you know? I've been I asked to the penitentiary <laughs> twice, man. I've been to the penitentiary twice, homie. You know, and, and, and the thing about it is coming up in the streets and doing whatever the streets have to offer, I was blessed to not even see the penitentiary. You understand what I'm saying? I become a millionaire and find myself in one of the worst federal penitentiaries in America. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't no PC nigga. I ain't protective cousin of nothing. I walk the yard like any other nigga done his thing. My penitentiary number was two zero six six nine zero seven five. I walked out that motherfucker in a few months. Was walking right back in that motherfucker just on the the you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is even that don't make you no real nigga. Going to prison and shit like that don't solidify you. What solidify you, I think, to make you a real nigga is being real with yourself, taking care of your loved ones, your kids, your family. That's what kind of really stamp you as being a real nigga. You can shoot a, many, a million niggas in the world. That's I think our generation kind of look at different things and consider niggas real niggas for 
you know, certain shit. And don't take that. I can't take that away. You got some real niggas out here that got real life stories that deserve to be looked at like that because they really did that and really walked from that. You know what I'm saying? But got a lot of these dudes, you know what I'm saying? They know how to talk good and shit and make it sound right on the record and we run with it and it's kind of hard to kind of separate what's real and what's not right now. You know? I, I only ask that because given your background and the history, I feel like I was going to ask you, do you think that you would be in a different place or further in your career if you wasn't as real all the time and you played the game more? I, you know what? That's a damn good question. Um, no. And I'm going to be honest. Because I've, I've said it's a good question because I haven't thought about that shit before. I've been like, you know, you know, what if I didn't say nothing? You know what I'm saying? Or just sit there and accept it, you know, the bullshit. Then... I'm no different than the motherfucker who doing it. You get what I'm saying? Because I'm allowing it. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, how can I allow you and consciously know you're doing something fucked up to me or something that I don't truly believe in myself to fuck with? And that's what type of individual I am. It shows, you know, if you go all the way back from the very beginning, you know what I'm saying? Um, when it comes to like situations that was going on early with G Unit and shit like that, that was some of the beginning of me and Fifty's quote unquote fall losses because, you know, he felt like I was being cool with his enemies, you know what I'm saying and shit like that, and it was based on the fact of, you know what I'm saying, the uh, me coming in a situation, everything is real. You feel what I'm saying? So when I started to realize that, uh, you know, some of these situations wasn't as real as I thought they was by actually either running up on the individuals, conversating with them, running into them. I ain't gonna get the name in them. These niggas know. You know, these niggas, rap niggas different, bro. They act like they don't see certain shit or certain shit ain't happening. Man, listen, man, in my time of, in that era, I was very, very unconsciously moving at times. So if it was issues and I caught you somewhere, you're going to see me. And you're going you're gonna to give me an answer. Or if it's that, we're going to get to it. So when it was that type of shit going down, a lot of times I would run in these dudes and shit. And they'd be like, no, nah, but we, we fuck with you. We just don't fuck with dude. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, that's my brother. So nigga, what, 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 ain't no problems. You know what I mean? Well, what I would do, we would come back and tell homie, yo, bro, homie now ain't tripping like that. I just ran into homie, you know what I mean? Or I just ended up chasing homie around the goddamn arena, homie. And I couldn't get to him, but, you know, shit like that. Or, you know, dude over there in the dressing room, I done bumped down on them niggas over there, man. He really don't want no problems. He really want to come speak to you, shit like that. You know, real niggas like, you know what I'm saying? Know these things. And, and like I say, that was my approach. And 50 would, 50 would be like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, it's cool, man. Tell, tell them, tell them names, come on through. <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, damn. In my mind, like, <laughs> All that shit. And oh, this shit don't work now. I mean, I'm seeing this nigga now with a lot of these niggas. And I'm like, nigga. I told you these niggas didn't have no problem. You know what I'm saying? It's 2020. You niggas rocking now. Cool. Salute. You what what did saying? you learn? The mo what was the uh, your biggest learning experience from the those situations in the I, industry uh, that we are now? And with this industry right now, I learned to uh, judge a lot of things from my own judgment. You know what I'm saying? Educate myself behind other people's education, G. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, uh, people gonna in this industry, my bad. No, you good, big dog. In this industry, G, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, these folks going to really capitalize off of what, what, what you don't know versus telling you what you need to know to get you there. Like, if you don't know, so what? They going to win off of you. You know what I'm saying? So it's better for you to, you know what I'm saying, just... 
really educate your goddamn self, man, and, and really, really make your own decisions with things because, like I say, I just had one of them situ well, come out of a situation pretty much where, you know, my word only went so far. You know, my talent is right here. You know what I mean? And uh, I just watched the, the, the positions of power and money manipulate or try to manipulate the minds of what's really real. But I'm also watching God work as well. Of course. Yo, I'll break the EP out right now. Seven tr seven tracks on that, they all fire. Uh there's a song there's a song on that called Signed Up, right? Yeah. You know, I had I had to I had to ask you about this. It said That's my fast. mom my mom reminds me to drip me on a on a FaceTime just trying to get me in a conversation with six nine. That was before he signed on the dotted line. He got my cousin five years. That's he like he, your cousin was caught up in that situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when I say my cousin, man, you know, uh, the cake, y'all, I'm just crippy. I'm, yeah. gonna leave it like that. I'm not going to call nobody government, but the world know him as crippy. That's that's one of my cousins. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just terrible seeing him caught up in the situation. It's terrible seeing all of them caught up in the situation because, I don't wish death or jail on, 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 on nobody at the end of the day. But, uh, you know, with me having somebody so close, shout out to Monster. Monster is a certified real one that uh, kind of turned around the whole G on the circle and the streets, you know, you know. But Crippy is Monster's little brother. And uh, <clears throat> Crippy's one of my real deal family members. When I'm saying cousins, it's because we're affiliated together from from something, you know, and uh, he used to <clears throat> always try to get me to do music with 6 9 you know, and uh, he would FaceTime me with homie, uh, and I finally decided to jump on the phone one time with, with him, you know what I mean? I think it was 6 9 and Shotty. That's back when they was rocking together, and I just jumped on the phone and kind of really felt homie out was like, you know, what up? You feel what I'm saying? And to be honest to say, I seen or felt anything that homie did now at the time. No, it was just a regular, what's up, what up? But we never followed up anywhere from the situation and us doing any music. I just had that respect at the time for homie, feeling like he gave my partner a... a, a I ain't gonna say a platform. He gave him an opportunity to be able to take care of his family because, you know, homie was a real life and still is a real life dude known throughout the streets of New York, Brooklyn, the whole nine. And uh, put in a lot of work and I always felt like, you know what I'm saying? If you're gonna put in some work and be amongst somebody, I felt like homie was showing them real love. And I, I kind of was growing to respect homie for that. But, um, at the end of the day, to watch, to watch him, you know what I'm saying, seeing so many different individuals and be so cold-hearted about how he's doing it, it's just amazing to me, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm not speaking on nobody's situation with shit, you feel me? And that record, when I say that record and speaking that record, like I say, it's all facts. I didn't want to get out here and diss the young nigga he got enough niggas doing that. The nigga do and did what he did for the world to get a hold of. I just wanted to make a record and kind of educate the young mind, not just him, but make him understand. Homie, just know what you signed up for. You know, regardless of how you living, what you doing, where, whatever, just know what you signed up for. And if you hear that record on there, that's the educational side of things, not just for, say, a 6 9 but that goes for the streets and these youngsters, old folks, any everybody. You know, you put yourself in a situation, know what you signed up for. Yeah, these things may have panned out the way homie said, but you signed up for this shit. And mm -hmm. that's how I look at what I'm in and how I rock. You know, I signed up for this shit. I can't, I can't trip on none of this shit. If anything, I got to figure it out and work through it because I already done signed up. When I, I feel like up, it means signed up to, for success, not no motherfucking 
snitching, nigga. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. I feel like the, the industry definitely lacks uh, integrity. But yeah. it's like, do, can we really expect that from the industry? Like, do we really expect integrity from the industry when everybody just care about themselves? Well, you know what? This the the this in I will say the new generation they they, they they got a lot of integrity in what they do. Shout out I like Meek Mills, little baby. You know what I'm saying? Gunner, you know what I mean? All of those dudes like that. And then you got tip, you know, a lot of these dudes that when I say integrity, they display it. They character display it. You know what I'm saying? And it's not about the age or or even the youth. It's just about displaying more integrity in the game in itself from everybody, not just the young generation or the quote unquote old heads or whatever the case we get, or even the, you know, everybody has to display the character of more integrity has to be put into the game from, of course, the pioneers. And it has to be put in the game as to the youngsters because the youngsters is really running and controlling this shit at this point. You know, it's I feel like we took a lot of the, we took a lot of the, the, the flat for what you see now. You get what I'm saying? We, we, we are the blame for a lot of this shit too, though. You get what I'm saying? These are the same youngsters that was watching and looking for opportunity from us. Some of them got it. Some of them got rejected. Some of them, you know. So at the same time, it's just about them being able to come full circle and understand that regardless of the life that God bless you with and success that you get from this game by financially being able to be a, you know, whatever and take care of whatever, the real life aspect is what you have to live by, not the life, the real life, meaning, you know, the roots of what life is, your foundation, your kids, your friends, you know, let that be your guidance, you know what I'm saying, then letting the money guide you. Because see, man, one thing I didn't learn out of this game for sure is that you build this game with the dollar, you understand me, that you build anything from a dollar, you take that dollar away, mm. it's gross. Trust You're going to fall with it. Do that. It's crazy because I uh, I was looking I was listening to a couple of your interviews and you always were saying how you was writing and you wrote for a lot of artists but I never heard you speak their names and I thought that was dope because that shows the integrity you got and I was yeah. wondering I'm, I'm like is that is that like a, a unsaid law that you're not supposed to really speak of the writers or the writers not supposed to really speak on who they writing for and things like that a lot of a lot of a lot of dudes either don't want you to do it or a lot of dudes choose to not speak on it. Like I, I wrote shit for, I wrote shit for 50. Word for word, 50's rap my shit. Mm. Word for word. I've never, I've never rapped or been ghost written for from no artist in my entire life. You know, I've worked with other artists on things, you know what I'm saying? But I've never, and that's not to take away from no artist, you know what I'm saying, that may have a ghost writer, you know it is what it is. You know how to see it good. <laughs> some of them know how to see it better than some of these other folks. But I've wrote, I've wrote records for, for, I've wrote records for a few individuals. I wrote one for 50 word for word, too rich. Everybody tuning in to this shit right now probably tripping. <laughs> so they, they probably like, damn, this thing. I do now, yeah. Too Rich was a record that I wrote, and uh, I still ain't, you know, I still ain't seen no nothing from that. You ain't word. get no money from that shit. Yeah, man, word for word, man. I mean, he changed a few of the words just to kind of make it, I make it what you hear, but word for word, that's the record I wrote. And he liked it so much he rapped it. And then I, when I heard it, nigga, you said this shit better than me. That's yours, fifty. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, when you're a team player, you that's the thing that, like I said, you do. I mean, he can't tell you he ever wrote me a record. You know what I'm saying? Or wrote a record for me. But 
like I say, man, the business, man, you got to understand the business. And that's what it all falls back on and reflects to with me. It's just about the business, man. It's all about making sure that you got that together because, you know, don't not take advantage of opportunity when you get it. But if it's business involved with it, put that same fucking energy that you put into the, the opportunity into business, man, because that's one of the learning lessons I've had to learn out of this. Like I tell you, if I could do anything over out of the game, I just put the same energy that I was putting in the opportunity into the business of it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm catching up. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas that I was once at a place where, quote unquote, at the peak of the whole shit, I would bring niggas on the stage, the TIs and the Jeezys and shit. And, you know, these boys, they went on to became what they became as solo artists. But I was the one that was presenting them at a point in time at our peak, trying to showcase to the world, these the next new niggas. And they became what they became. I heard you gave a lot of niggas money, too, back in the day. Like, you like you was looking out for a lot of niggas that niggas don't even know. Like yeah. You helped a lot of people, man. On, on your way up. A lot of people. A lot of people. I've been at this game. I'm 39 years old. I've been at this shit since I was 13, 14 years old. First individuals I ever met was Baby. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Baby and the whole cash money. Baby motto back then was fake it till you make it. But nigga, we had we was young and really, really doing it in real life. So he 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 seen how young that me and my entourage was and how really real life shit really was in love. I think we kind of really added on to the flavor of what he had going on. He taught us, we taught him, you know what I'm saying, and shared experiences. I just done had my, you know, journey in the game. Rest in peace to Pimp C. Shout out to Bun B. Pimp was the first guy I ever met with this game. I miss him so much because he gave me the realest shit I've ever had. And that was, you know, just by telling me, you know what I'm saying? From the very beginning of this game, I was so excited to be around him and, and thought that that was all I needed to do was rap. And he liked my shit and I could get it. And he told me, man, I can't do nothing for you right now, young man. And then I'm looking like, nigga, you, what you mean? You feel me? He like, man, I'm so fucked up in this situation. I can't bring you on a situation and ask you to starve, my nigga. Mm. And I really it was so real, man. And, and I bond stayed like that from that day on. No matter what I went through, no matter what, I knew that was one of the realest niggas ever because he started to direct me in the lanes to where I could get money versus them trying to sell me a dream to get money off of me as a young man. Showed me the direction. So I started to run into real niggas like DJ Paul. You know what I'm saying? They started to show me direction and be big brothers and shit. But it was all because I was a young nigga that was moving around in these streets taking care of my business. So, you know, financially I've showed up for individuals, but a lot of individuals have showed up for me too. It go both ways. So I ain't gonna glorify nothing off of what I done done for somebody because it's all been cheap. And I ain't gonna be like, oh, I gave this nigga that. I got yeah, I done done and took care of my share. But my share done took care of me too. It go both ways, you did. Mm. Hey, man, I definitely, I want to say thank you for this interview, man. I appreciate it. You're an old Yeah, man. So hey, many, man. a huge supporter of you. So many yeah. people are huge supporters of you. You already know. Yeah, man. That's Cheers, it. man. To everybody who tapped in, man. I hope I uh, answered some of the questions. I don't get to see a lot of the comments and shit on here. I don't see nothing, really. Yeah, I turned the comments off, so, like, when I post yeah. it, it won't be in your way. I ain't going to be in your way. Shit. Yeah. I hey. and shit. I just now, they show you love. Hey, it's hey, but, before we get out of here, bro, before we get out of here, I just yeah. want to acknowledge this, man. You know, George George Floyd was killed we yesterday by by some police officers, and it, it wouldn't be right if we talking all this real shit and not, a, not acknowledge some real shit that's going on. Man, this shit been going on for forever now. Like, when is enough? What can we do? What do we do? Because we've been, we've been marching for years, for years on years before I was even born. You know what I'm saying? We've been We've been marching. We've been protesting. We've been saying that this ain't right. We've been getting this shit on. At this point, it's no excuse. We've been getting this shit on camera since fucking 92. For sure. This, For sure. Well, Rodney King, how, what are your thoughts on the police brutality? 
I mean, uh, I guess first and foremost, shout out to Steven Jackson, man. That's 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 a real one. He's a definitely a real one. And um, it was his twin, you know. And I know Steven, you know what I'm saying? Steven has showed up for me in a lot of real times and real situations. So I, I definitely want to send my condolences to him and the whole family over there. I think, honestly, you know, like like this clipping I've been seeing of this young guy, man, speaking, everybody been posting. I think he kind of summed it up for all the African-American people in the sense. It's like, we're not the problem. It's not us. And until they change, you know what I'm saying? It's no changes that we have to do in a sense as a people other than figure out a, a way to 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 survive you understand what i'm saying if we continue to sit back and and do what's been done and protest and we become another uh, you know no different than what is just being it seems like it's nothing we're getting from protesting mm. so uh sometimes man i'm just a firm believer where you know before you take my life you understand what i'm saying i gotta do anything and everything i gotta do to survive even if it comes to taking yours mm. so that's just my way of thinking and and you know it comes a time where we just gotta realize that you know if we feel like our life is threatened to the point where there's law enforcement or by anybody at the point where you feel that your life is in the position of being taken from you, then we can't just sit around and keep yelling at the camera. We got to run in and go in and deal with the jail time and, and let them beat us with the baton too because, you know, it's fucked up what the police did. You get what I'm saying? It's fucked up what they did, and we all seen that. But I look at sometimes the narrator of the camera that we be at, that we looking through it through, man. And it's like, nigga, man, come on, nigga, drop that fucking phone at some point in time, nigga, and get in here, man. This nigga, you close enough to this nigga. You right there by this nigga he telling you he can't breathe. You know, I know it's the police. I know they got their guns. But nigga, go to go 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 with him. You know, it's enough spectators to be around these situations. Instead of picking up a fucking gun, pick up a fucking brick. Pick up a fucking, if do something. You know what I'm saying? Fight with a motherfucker. Because we fighting after the fact. When we having chances to be able to fight with the person or form. That's just my way of thinking. Honestly, you know, you know I'm watching a lot of the cameramen. You know what I mean? Damn, homie, you're a hell of a narrator. You just narrated a nigga death. Mm. See what I'm saying? Like, shit, nigga, you ain't getting no licks in, nigga. Yeah, and the only thing you get to get from it is what we able to see. Yeah, we hear you in the background, but goddamn, homie, you close enough. Ain't no way in here you can't tell me you can't push this nigga. He gonna have to get up off this nigga neck. You feel me? And, and Lord knows that I'm not using the term, with, with, like I say, I'm saying the narrator is sometimes in these situations need to think a little bit more than a fucking phone and a camera and covering the death. Get in the fucking ring, nigga. Get in the fire with the nigga. Because I feel like, shit, if you wouldn't so much with the camera and you put your heart where your hand at, nigga, you dig what I'm saying? He might have had a shot. You pushing this officer into the other officer. That little gas for wind made him gave him enough breath to make it through. But now you're going to sit here and, oh, man, and, oh, man, and this stuff. You know, so we got to change our way in thinking, man, and learn that we got to fight with each other. Yeah, you might not know this person. Yeah, you not. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes, man, listen, homie, if you can see him dying because that kind of aggravates me out of that situation. I'm listening to a person saying, stop, he ain't breathing. And you see him die. No, if you can see that shit, then nigga, you pick up something and go in there with him. We gonna all make your bond. The whole world gonna make your bond. Nigga, you gonna live like a hero in jail, nigga. Mm. You know, if that's the case, if you're scared, niggas need to start putting fear outside of their lives, you know, because that's the only one thing that we got in common is mm -hmm. black, white, 
people, period, is death mm. on me. So if for me, I ain't feeling nothing. I ain't. I feel God because I ain't met him yet. I was talking to my my manager, Big U, and I was telling him that, like, man, you know what? You know, difference between me and a lot of these niggas is, you know, they still deal with the fears and shit. You know, the outcomes. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't, you know, don't get it fucked up. Everybody love life. I know I do. I love my children, but before I could deal with knowing I watched another life get took in front of my eyes and I didn't show no action and it's my brother. Something to think about, my bro. No, you're right, man. Hey, again, man, I appreciate you so much. Listen, man, to all the Buck supporters, when you go to sleep, put that motherfucking EP on repeat. Turn your, turn your phone all the way down. Get them streams up. You get what I'm saying? Word, man. Play, Play that man. shit. You know what I'm saying? And go to my link. If you need to get the EP and you haven't heard it, you're trying to figure out just go to my link in my bio, or you can go to any platform. My shit is out. Salute to everybody out here, bro, that tuned in, man. And shout out to you, bro, for making this happen for real, bro. Man, you're a motherfucking king. You're a fucking goat. You're a legend. Everybody knows what the fuck is up with Buck, nigga. I appreciate that shit, G. All righty, dog. Going. Salute, man. I'm out of here, bro. All righty, dog. See you later, man. 100.